We are well on our way to becoming closer to the actual implementation of list that ships with .NET. Let's continue to write our own list. I think it's educational to write all these containers once in your computer science career and then forget about them. But don't forget about how they actually work. But it is good to write them at least once so you can appreciate what's going on and understand the trade-offs between one container versus another and the overhead, that sort of thing. In this video, I want to examine these properties and or functions. The capacity is simply the amount of items the list could hold before the list has to resize itself. In our version of the list, we started with an initial capacity of five, and even though we only added three items to a me list, when we do create a me list, we can store up to five items, but our count will be three. Let's go back to the actual built-in list here. I'll say console write line my party ages dot count. That should be three. And console write line my party ages dot capacity. Control F5, build that, run that. You can see the count is three because we had three items. We added three items. Recall that the C sharp compiler simply converts these things inside the curly braces to dot add calls. Our count is three, yet our capacity is one more than three. It is four. In fact, we can come to my party ages. Let's have grandpa show up. Grandpa's 99 years old, and we'll say console right line count and capacity. After adding grandpa, the count will be four, and the capacity will still be four, because we have room for grandpa. We can fit grandpa in without having to resize our list. You can see both of those values here are four. But let's say grandpa brings along grandma. I believe grandma was 101 years old. Well, there's no room to fit grandma, so the built-in list has to resize itself. And the default implementation is to take the current capacity and double it. So control F5 this. You can see once we've added grandma, our count is five because we have one, two, three, four, five people at our party. But the capacity of four was doubled to eight. So now I can actually add three more people to the list before the list has to resize. I encourage you to use this constructor argument to list if you know what a good default capacity is. You want to avoid resizing your list as much as possible. There's overhead in that. I showed you in the array videos how we had to create a new array. We had to copy everything over to the new array. That helps fragment your heap. That's also not crash coherent. And it also puts strain on the garbage collector because the garbage collector has to clean up the old one, compact the heap. Ugh. So if you know the initial capacity, pass initial capacity here. And even if you're off, at least you can give it some sort of guess. Let's say, hey, uh, I think I'll have 10 people come to my party. And it turns out 10 people didn't show up, only five did. But now I don't have to resize at all. I, I have three to begin with, yet there's 10 slots. And then we add grandma and grandpa. We have five people in there, but we still have 10 slots. So I can have another five people come, and I do not have to resize my list. Now with these small numbers, as I have here, resizing isn't too expensive. But what if you get into some larger numbers? For example, let's get rid of all of this, get rid of all of this, and control L, all of those lines to get them out of our face. Four, int I. I less than, let's do 500, tab, enter, my party ages dot add I. Well, how many times will a list have to resize itself once I've added all 500 people? We can actually figure that out with a little bit of magic. Int current capacity gets my party ages dot capacity. Let's console right line current capacity just to see what the default capacity is for a list. Let's go down here into our loop and after adding i, which will go 0 through 499, let's do a check here and say if current capacity is not equal to my party ages dot capacity, then we know that the list had to resize itself. Let's put some curlies in here and we'll say console right line resized the capital R resized to my party ages dot capacity. And then we need to say, well, the current capacity is now my party ages dot capacity. So every time that the list has to resize itself, we'll report how, what it resized itself to. Store that away so that the if check will fail until the list has resized itself again. Let's add 500 elements. Control F5. And we can see here that the Default capacity start out at zero. So as soon as we create a list and we add something, the list has to resize itself. Not too expensive to do four or eight, but very quickly we build up and build up and build up. We have to copy, reallocate 
put pressure on the garbage collector, all that fun stuff. What a headache. And that's because I was naive. I wanted to add 500 items to a list. And there you go. In fact, if I know I'm only going to have 500 items, I should probably just use an array and not use a list. Because we use lists for that convenience of resizing. But if we're intelligent, we can say, hey, list, I think I'm going to have, I don't know, about 600 people show up to my party. I'm real popular, you know, but I could be wrong. Control F5. Build this, run this, and you can see, well, since we gave a value of 600 as the initial capacity, the list did not have to resize itself. But you could also shoot yourself in the foot. You say, hey, I think I'm really popular. I have 6,000 friends that are all going to come to the party. And then we only add 500. Well, now we've just wasted 5,500 ints times 4 for bytes, 4 bytes per ints, 5,500 times 4. Whatever that is, we just wasted all that room. So you want to be intelligent when passing this value in here. I mean, it's better to say, well, I think 250 will show up, and then sure, we'll, we'll, we'll eat the cost for a resize, but at least we didn't waste all that extra space. Anyway, whew, let's, uh, let's implement capacity and count in our own list here. It's actually going to be pretty easy. Public int capacity. We'll make it a property, just like the built-in list does. We'll have a getter. And all we need to do is return items.length, the length of the underlying array. Count is even just as easier. All we have to do is return count here. So public int count. We'll have a getter. Notice we didn't have a setter here. It doesn't make sense to have a setter up here nor down here. Get return little count like so. And there you go. We've implemented our own count and our own capacity. I actually... I want to have some fun with this count, though. Since we have a count property, I want to use that in our own internal private code inside of me list and get rid of this backing variable and let the C-sharp compiler add that backing variable for us. So I'll actually make this an automatic property, bring everything up on its own line. We'll say get, but then we'll have a private setter, and then Control-Shift-B, have the compiler tell us where we failed to have a count. Control-Shift-U... Control-Shift-U, Control-Shift-B again, two more errors, Control-Shift-F12 to go to the next error, Control-Shift-U to uppercase, Control-Shift-F12, Control-Shift-U. Wow, what a headache. But at least now we have our own property here. Let's go down here and say me list. Me list. We actually have to add a constructor that takes an initial capacity. So I'll just come up here and say CTOR me list. And I'll say int capacity gets 5. Then we won't instantiate the array here. Instead, what we will do is say items, control V, gets new T array with a capacity of whatever capacity they want. By using default argument values here, we have a parameterless constructor and a parameterful constructor. If you call me list without passing an initial capacity, then the default value will be 5. Put a semicolon there. And control F5, builds and runs, we see we're good here. Let's actually use the parameter list constructor, run that, and you can see, oh, our list had to resize itself several times there. So there you go, that's capacity and count. I showed you earlier in the video, if you think you're really popular, but you're not as popular as you think you are, sometimes you can have this capacity be way too large. If you call trim excess, that will actually take the fat off of your list. In fact, let's go back to the default built-in list. Let me just show you how this works. We'll come down here, say console write line my party ages dot capacity. Control F5. You can see the capacity is 6,000. We didn't have to resize because it's way larger than we thought. We thought we did really popular here and it turns out only 500 people showed up to the party. We can actually trim off the fat. If we just come here and say my party ages dot trim the excess. Take that off. I wish my diet plan was that easy. Take off everything excess from my body that I don't need. That'd be awesome. And then when I right line my party ages dot capacity here, then we're not wasting as much room as we were before since we've trimmed the excess there. Control F5, build this, run this. You can see our capacity is always 6,000. Plenty of room for the 500 people. But then once I say trim excess, then the list has to go to the work of instantiating a new array of only length 500, copying all the items, 500 items over. But then I'm no longer wasting the 5,500 ints that I had before. 
Implementing the clear function is pretty straightforward. When we clear a list, that doesn't mean vaporize the array underneath. It just means, hey, all these things that I added to the list, take them out, which in our implementation is going to be pretty easy. I'll say clear, and for clear, I'll just say count gets zero, and there we go. We've just cleared our list. Even though the underlying array will still have the values inside of that array that the user out here in main, the user added those values. Even though that underlying array will still have those values, they are dead to us. We have abandoned them. And as the user adds more items to the list, we'll just overwrite those old values. That's perfectly fine implementation there. I don't believe the built-in clear actually resizes the underlying array to nothing. I could be wrong here. Let's come in here. Remember, we're using the built-in list here. So I'll say my party ages dot clear. Remove everything, quote unquote, pretend they're all dead, and then console write line my party ages dot capacity. I believe that will still stay 500, though I could be wrong. Yes, it still stays 500. As far as the list is concerned, yeah, I got these 500 slots. We'll reuse them. Chances are you're clearing me to add more things in, and it'd be a waste to re reallocate an array and that sort of thing. So be intelligent when using a list. Set the capacity as close as you can, the initial capacity as close as you can. And if you overguess, then trim off the excess if you want to get that memory back. I want to prove to you that our implementation actually works just fine. I'll switch this back over to me list, which is the list we've been working on through the series of these videos. But we actually have to write our own trim excess function, so let's do that. I forgot to do that, actually. Public void trim excess. I'll say t array new array it's new t array count give me an array a perfect sized array to hold just the items we're interested in and not the extra overhead array dot copy i want to copy the come on why is it hanging up items to our new array but i only want to copy the items that we're interested in that is the items that the user of our list is interested in we're trimming off the excess and then now that we have all the items in this new array we simply need to make this new array our underlying array so i'll say items instead of using the old array with the extra room in it let's say items gets new array and that leaves the old array with the extra fluff up for garbage collection so anyway overhead with this obviously but it does trim our excess and gives us room on the heap and the garbage collector can clean that up for us so going down here we see that the capacity here will be 6,000 because we started with 6,000 but only 500 people came to our party once we trim the excess we should be down to 500 and then when we, we clear that will actually remove all the items from our array. Let's run this, 12.5. You can see, sure enough, current capacity here is 6,000. Capacity down here is still 6,000. We trim the excess, we get the excess off. And then when we clear, that doesn't change the capacity necessarily. It just says, hey, as far as we're concerned out here in Maine, as consumers of the list, the list is now empty, even though underneath we know we're keeping our 500 element array, because chances are if you're clearing the the list and you're going to be adding to it and why start over again so anyway that's up to us to manage to give instances of me list hints that's all too often i see programmers just knew these up and let's add and let's add and clear and, da -da -da, and let's not think about what's going on underneath you need to be aware of what's going on on underneath i think one of the main problems why we need so much ram gigabytes and gigabytes of ram and hard drive space is because we're sloppy programmers these days i find it interesting the same thing is true with money as you earn more and more money it doesn't more money doesn't solve the problem your behaviors solve the problem if you can't learn to live within uh, a meager means then you obviously will have the same problem even if you have tons and tons of money anyway i want a soapbox right now and there was also one other thing i noticed with the clear function I want to clean up here's our clear function I said that this was a perfect perfectly fine Im fine sorry perfectly fine implementation of clear but then I put a little note in the video showing you know what it actually is not perfectly fine because if we have references from our underlying array to objects that are technically let go 
that is as far as we're concerned out here those objects are gone they should be up for garbage collection if underneath the hood we don't nullify all of our references to those objects then the garbage collector will not consider those objects open for garbage collection so we should at least nullify all of the references in our underlying array we just can't say the count is equal to zero unless unless the type t this type ooh, all the way up here this type t is a value type if you don't understand the difference between value types and reference types i have some excellent videos on that but chances are we're going to store more reference types than value types using an implementation of me list so we need to nullify all of those references a cheap and dirty way of doing so is so if we make a for loop here for int i i less than count enter and then up here, I'll say item sub i gets default of t. Give me the default value for t. With reference types, that will be null, thus nullifying all the items. And with the a value type, it's generally zero. You know, if it's an int, it's zero. If it's unsigned int, it's zero. If it's a char, it's zero still. That sort of thing. We could try to throw in a premature optimization here and say if type of t oops t dot base type dot equals type of value type then return and we can move this count get zero up here steve halliday would freak out my friend steve halliday i have some of his videos on my channel he'd freak out seeing this return but essentially i say hey as far as the list is concerned there's nothing in it the count is zero and if we're storing value types we don't need to worry about the garbage collection we can just say hey return otherwise we need to go and nullify all those references so i think this is probably a premature optimization i'll take that out and i'll just say count get zero let's set default t to zero and be done